After an adventure which had lasted more than a decade, September the 30th, 2016 marked the end of ESA's comet chaser Rosetta. As the spacecraft made a grand finale with a controlled landing on the comet churumyov gerasimenko Only two weeks earlier, Rosetta had managed to locate its lost land of Philae as a farewell present. New out-of-this-world images were obtained and the data gathered by Rosetta will be studied for years to come. It was the first time a full cycle of a comet orbiting the Sun was observed as a spacecraft accompanied it, while its activity changed from dormant to highly active and back to sleep again. Another solar system mission was ExoMars. The mission was launched in March 2016 and in October it arrived at the Red Planet. The mission consisted of two elements. The first one is the Trace Gas Orbiter, which was placed successfully into orbit around Mars and has completed many calibration tests since. Now it is aerobraking to achieve a circular orbit by spring next year. The second element was the Schiaparelli Mars Lander. It journeyed to Mars with the orbiter, but didn't land softly onto the planet's surface after a computer error led to a wrong altitude calculation. However, the lander demonstrator collected almost all of its expected data before the impact, and in doing so provided crucial knowledge for the preparation of the upcoming ExoMars 2020 mission, when ESA and Roscosmos will send a rover on the surface of Mars to search for past or present signs of life. Back to Earth now with Galileo, Europe's own satellite navigation system. Last November, ESA launched four Galileo satellites for the first time on top of an Ariane 5. Now 18 Galileo satellites are on orbit, and in December, Galileo's initial services started, meaning Galileo is operational and can be used. A major achievement for the European Commission and ESA. Then, in early December, during the Ministerial Council in the Swiss city of Lucerne, the ministers in charge of space representing the member states of ESA agreed to further endorse European navigation, approving an innovation and support program based on ESA's expertise for consolidating and improving Europe's positioning satellite system. In Lucerne, ministers also emphasized the importance of Europe's independent access to space. Even before the conference, the full development of Ariane 6 and Vega C had already been confirmed. Ariane 6's first flight is planned for 2020, and the building of its launch pad is already underway in Kourou. At this conference, further support for the International Space Station ISS until 2024 was also agreed upon. It was at that time that French ESA astronaut Thomas Pesquet had begun his stay at the ISS for ESA's ninth long-duration mission. Launched to the ISS on the 17th of November 2016, he's become the 10th Frenchman in space. During his 196 days stay, Pesquet performed 100 scientific experiments in many domains and made two spacewalks outside the ISS. He returned to Earth just days ago, on the 2nd of June. By the end of July, Italian astronaut Paolo Nespoli will have returned to the ISS for the third time. It will be another long-duration mission for the Italian Space Agency and ESA. Just like the astronauts on board the ISS enjoying the view of our planet, the Sentinel Earth Observation satellites are monitoring Earth, in particular as part of the European Union and ESA's Copernicus program. On March the 7th, ESA launched Sentinel-2B on a Vega rocket from Kourou and it then joined its twin satellite in orbit. Both Sentinel-2s carry a wide-swathe, high-resolution, multispectral imager, offering a fresh perspective on land usage and vegetation with an improved revisit time for surface areas of only five days. Users are looking forward to mapping global land cover at an unprecedented 10-meter resolution. In January, Hispasat 36W1 was also launched on a Soyuz from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. This telecommunication satellite was the first in orbit to be based upon ESA's Small Geo platform. Small Geo is Europe's response to flexible modular telecom satellite platforms. This is an excellent illustration of the solid partnership between ESA and the European industry to ensure Europe is always ahead in providing the best space technology.